Hey everyone, Jared VK3BL here. And you may have seen recently my noise blanker demonstration video. It was a really short one and I didn't give an introduction and that, and it was a little confusing. Um, but the reason I just sort of snapped that video up all I could was because I was busy installing a second speaker in my shack. I bought another Yaesu SP2000 speaker so that I could have um, an external speaker plugged into both my main receiver and my sub receiver on the 7610. Now I'm going to show you uh, in a video, in a few clips, what the experience of having two ex external speakers plugged into separate receivers is like on a 7610. Now just to be clear, both the receivers have been set up the same. They both have 12 decibels of attenuation applied on 40 meters. That's, uh, I've got quite a big antenna, so a little bit of attenuation on 40 helps. There's no preamp. Digital select is off on both of the um, receivers. You know, just, just to make sure there's no uh, issues caused by that. And they're set to track each other. So if you see here, it's got tracking. When you tune along like so, they both track each other. So there's no trickery, there's no gimmicks. Um, this, the clips I'm going to show you are a genuine representation of what it's like to have two external speakers plugged into a 7610 and listening to the same QSO um, on each speaker. So one thing I've noticed, and I don't know whether that's to do with my hearing, whether it's just to do with manufacturing tolerances, it's, it's hard to say, is that to balance the audio when I'm sitting in the middle of the shack, I do have to have the volume potentiometers on different settings. I actually have to have my um, main receiver turned up a little bit louder for it to sound like I've got equal noise in both ears. That could be something to do with the radio or it could be something to do with my genetics. Um, and I dare say that most operators will find that that's the case. Um, it's probably a bit of both, to be honest. Nevertheless, it doesn't matter. Um, it is a little bit annoying, say, if you're trying to listen to uh, 774 or 693 or Radio National. Um, you do have to put a little bit of effort in to balance the output of both speakers. It's not as simple as just having two plugged into the one output and they're sort of in stereo, like in your car. You do have to, you do have to balance them there. And that kind of makes me think, well, it would be nice to make a, an external balance control. but that might be a project for another day. Anyway, back to what I'm doing. So in this clip I'm going to show you, I've set it all up on a QSO this morning. There was some um, quite good propagation. And I start off by, what I've done is I've, I've taken one of my Mevo cameras and they have a stereo microphone and I've brought it right into the shack. I've tried to put it, it doesn't quite look like it because of the camera angles and that, but I've put it essentially exactly in between the two speakers. Now, some of you may know from my Strictly Ham Tour video, the microphones in these aren't fantastic. Um, but unfortunately on a small uh, YouTube channel such as mine, I don't have the luxury of having some, you know, studio grade condensers that uh, they'd use for capturing drums and all that sort of orchestral stuff in stereo. So this is what we used. And um, having reviewed the video myself, the clip, I can tell you that you can hear the stereo effect. So it is, it does give you the experience of sitting close to the radio and varying the different settings. So in this clip that I'm about to show, um, the first thing I do is turn on and off the different speakers. So I'll mute one and you'll hear it come from the different ear on the different side in stereo. And I'll mute the other and vice versa. Um, I play with the EQ equalizer or the bandpass settings on each speaker and um, I also try adjusting the volume a little bit just to give you uh, show you how it works uh, in terms of having to match them up I suppose. Now bear in mind that would be a completely different use case to doing something like DXing where you might have your main receiver on the call frequency of the DX station say KH1 Baker Island and you may have your secondary speaker um, on the pile-up. Now, unfortunately, I didn't quite have um, the second speaker in time to do that sort of test, but to be honest, it was something I more wanted for rag tubes. If I was going to DX, I'd, I'd use um, headphones anyway. So, um, 
this is sort of a good example of the experience you'll get from having two speakers plugged into two receivers. So I hope you enjoy that sample and afterwards I'm going to follow it up with another sample. Yeah, roger there, Steve. So you're on quite a reasonable signal here. Uh, nine plus a bit. And uh, the uh, uh, readable five all the way. So no problem there, Steve. Uh, you did say exactly where you are, but uh, I, I, I just forgot. I didn't get to write it down. So you might repeat that for me if you would. Over. Okay, I'll do um, <laughs> Fern Tree Gully. I'll say again, Fern Tree Gully. A little bit like Tea Tree Gully, but we've got Fern here instead of Tea Trees. Okay, this is VK3HK. Yeah, roger, roger there, Steve. Fern Tree Gully, not a problem. I sort of half know where that is because my uh, uh, son was over there for a while in that sort of area and he mentioned that place two or three times while he was there. <laughs> but on the phone, not on radio. <laughs> so there you go, Steve. But uh, thank you very much and uh, have a good one, mate. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that um, representation of what it's like to have two speakers plugged into two receivers. Now I keep laboring on that point because if I had have just used a splitter cable and plugged both speakers into the one receiver, you would get a different experience. You wouldn't have to bother um, essentially matching the volume levels and that sort of thing. You wouldn't have to bother setting both the receivers up the same. It wouldn't be the same thing. Having two speakers plugged into two receivers, even in the same radio, um, it does require a bit of driving. It's not just a, a click and um, forget sort of setting. So I am actually tempted to make up a little adapter so that I can choose between having both the speakers as dual mono or having um, the speakers plugged in as essentially um, stereo, you know, one in each receiver. So that will be interesting. Now the second video clip I want to show you demonstrates a strange sort of phenomenon I've discovered with the IC7610. 
and that is that the phase between the main receiver and the sub receivers audio frequency sections is not locked um, and it's sort of a hard hard um, concept to convey but basically if you tune the band with both of the receivers um, running into each speaker you will hear the sound come back and forth between the two speakers as you tune now that would have been really hard for me to capture um, using one of these little Mevo cameras that we use but what I did notice is that if you transmit just briefly with, with no, no audio of course over the top of someone who's talking so you basically cycle the um, radio between um, transmitting and receiving you'll actually get that effect of the phase changing between the speakers so this next little clip will show um, show a VK calling CQ and it will show me basically hitting transmit and taking transmit off, not transmitting anything at all, just uh, taking the radio out of receive mode. And you'll hear the audio jump around a little bit between the left and the right speaker. And that's the phase difference I'm talking about. Now, that sort of raises the technical question. Um, and this is where I, I sort of debate the definition of diversity in something like an IC7610. Um, but certainly, I, I will say that when you're purely receiving, there is no um, there is no phase difference. They don't, uh, you know, um, start beating each other like two slightly out of frequency tones. They do stay locked. But certainly, when you when you do tune and when you do cycle them between on and off, um, you will change the phase delay. So I don't know whether that's due to the audio section. Um, whether that's due to the tuning section, whether that's due to the way the FPGA processes both the ADC streams, I couldn't tell you, um, but I can show you that it exists, and that's what I'm going to do in this next clip. So just uh, have a watch. I understand it's a bit of a strange thing to record, but just pay attention to where the audio sounds like it's coming from, and you'll understand the concept I'm trying to convey. All right, I'll do that now. Victor Kilo 3, the Fox Bravo, DK3 FSB, calling CQ, 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 CQ. This is the Victor Kilo 3, Foxtrot, Foxtrot, Bravo, DK3 FSB, CQ, CQ, CQ. Victor Kilo 3, Fox, Fox Bravo, calling and listening call. So as you can see, um, there are a few little quirks when it comes to using um, dual speakers with the 7610. It's certainly not the same as having, say, dual mono on a single receiver radio. Um, you are definitely getting two fully separate audio streams. It would be like having, say, one speaker plugged into my Kenwood here, one speaker plugged into my ICOM, and a chain between the VFOs and sort of uh, rotating them. So there is that that slight difference, uh, especially when it comes to, I guess, phasing of the audio. Now, the question is, is that a good or a bad thing? Well, it's it's kind of neither. Um, you may find, for instance, that um, by adjusting the volume levels and adjusting the filtering um, to suit each of your individual ears, you can actually have a more pleasant listening experience. Um, so I think there is scope, especially if you're doing something like listening to um, medium wave radio, there's definitely scope for having the two speakers adjusting each one for your ears preferences and just really getting more out of the radio. What I do find a little bit annoying is the fact that the phase difference between the audio frequency sections at the very least changes when you transmit. So you might find that having dual speakers plugged into dual receivers and participating in a um, you know, in a net or a round table, gets a little annoying because, you know, after you're over, all of a sudden the balance is out and you have to go and readjust the volume knobs. So um, that's a little bit of a quirk. I, I do hope that might be something they can fix in some firmware. So I'm just putting that out there. Um, to me, it sort of screams out latency and it, it says, um, you know, the second receiver is starting 10 milliseconds later than the first receiver and that sort of thing. So I think 
that might be a code thing they can work on. But um, if it does really bother you, all you need to do is set yourself up with a little box that lets you choose between essentially dual mono on the one receiver and true stereo um, using both receivers. So there you go. Um, hopefully that's an explanation and uh, sort of demonstrates the experience of what it's like to have dual speakers on an IC7610. Please let me know if you've uh, owned the dual receiver radio before and whether you've had similar experiences. I don't know whether um, what I've experienced is unique um, to the 7610 or whether it's um, just something that uh, generally crops up with dual receiver radios with independent speakers. I suspect the, the later, and that is that it's quite a common occurrence, is the case. But hopefully I've managed to capture that and show people who may not have had a dual receiver radio before what it can be like. Anyway, this is Jared VK3BL, uh, enjoying radio as always, and saying 73 for my radio. Thanks everyone.